Welcome to the Elections Research and Resource Center talk. I am Mami, the host for this discussion. Today, we are here to delve into the recent developments surrounding Alan Tremontin's decision to run as an independent candidate in the upcoming 2024 elections and its potential impact on Ghana's political landscape. Joining me are two seasoned experts on Ghanaian and African politics, Mr. Alex Kater from Pond, an adjunct senior lecturer at the University of Ghana and the executive director of the ERRC. Dr. Abdul Jalilu Ateku is a lecturer at the University of Ghana and an associate fellow of the ERRC. Welcome, Mr. Frimpong and Dr. Ateku. Welcome. Mami. Thank you very much, Mami. Let's begin with Mr. Frimpong. Sir, where does this Alan situation sit in the MPP's history of intra party succession challenges? Thank you. Let me take a broader view of the idea of choosing a successor in an incumbent party. Miriam Ottawa has said it is the weak link, the arteries heal for incumbent parties. After the sitting president is moving out, and we have to choose a successor after he has completed his two terms, often creates problems. And those programs bring division within the party and may often lead to its inability to win the next elections. What factors account for some of these is the attitude of the outgoing president to the succession process, whether it's going to be neutral or it's going to be very active and the implications that may have. <clears throat> Which groups are made delegates and how representative are they? And how many people will want to contest? Often several people will cite their there are services to the party and why they think they should also be candidates. And when we have such a large number, it often brings division within the party. And it's often difficult to hear when the time comes after the leader has been chosen. And in this context, what is happening with Alan Shermatin it's about the history of succession within the ruling MPP, or uh, broadly speaking, the UP tradition. And I'll just give a, a historical shot of what has happened in the UP tradition. I think it's back to 1979. The circumstances were not the same as this one, but it still had implications. Buzia, who was the leader of the party in the Second Republic, had died in 79. Had died in 78. And when in 79, we were going for the 79 election, the issue of who succeeds Buzia as the leader of the UP tradition became a problem. It could not be resolved, and it ended up with the UP tradition having two parties. The PAF People Pro Front Party led by Victor Wusu and the UNC led by William Furiata. And clearly, that contributed a lot to the victory of the Encomaist PMP. Because they threw that at each other and allowed the PMP to get through. When we came to the start of the fourth republic, it appeared. The UP tradition had learned lessons from 79. And there were deliberate efforts to stay united. It's interesting, for example, to note that there were in the national executive and even the presidential ticket for 92. There were a combination of former PFP and former UNC leaders. The presidential ticket, for example, at Dubai. Mm was a losing uh, 
parliamentary candidate for UMP in 79, became the presidential candidate. And his uh, running mate, Alassan, Roran Alassan, was a PFP uh, parliamentary winner. So it appeared they have learned the lesson and they were conscious of staying united. And without consciousness, even when the leadership changed from Adubai to before, there was not much program. And that was what contributes to the mm -hmm. success of 2000. But it was when Kofo was moving out, that the programs arose. Mm -hmm. In that contest, we had a Kufu Ado, who there was the general perception was the hair apparent. We had a two-term vice president, Ali Mahama, who called himself the experienced apprentice or something of that sort. And Alan Martin, which at that time everybody saw was the outgoing president favorite. So just around those three people, the contest were still being stiff. But several other people came in, citing their own rules in the party and why they think they should also be candidates. But upon after being uh, presidential press secretary for six years, where enough of the presidency has robbed of him, and so he could be president. General Dambuchi said he supervised the two success and he too could be. Jake said he, he was a campaign manager for the two successful elections and he too should be president. My own mentor, Okwe, talked about the dark days where people were afraid to go to GBC and what they did over there. So in the end, we had about 17. But it was 18, only one was discovered and we had 17. And that was the time the MPP lost its well-guided unity. After the primaries, there were a lot of divisions here and there, culminating Alancha Martin resigning and coming back. And I've often said that that situation brought back all the demons in 1979. And to me, that guided unity was thrown into the air. And since that time, the wounds have not been healed. And that is what we see has happened. That wound has festered, and that has happened in the departure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now, turning to Dr. Ateko, given Alan Tremontin's long history with the MPP, how do you assess the impacts of his departure on the party's internal dynamics and unity leading up to the 2024 elections? Right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mami. Uh, in fact, to assess the impact of what has happened, I think that the issues are, are, are still ongoing. If they, they are not exhaustive. There are so many things that are still happening. So. Uh, will not be able to comprehensively maybe um, uh, make pronouncement about what, I mean, what will be uh, maybe the, the, the final outcome of it. But there are some pointers that we need to just look at from what has happened. Uh, talking about the impact, I think um, the first aspect that I want to look at it is the, um, in terms of the, the expertise and then the policies. Right of uh, because if you look at it, he has resigned. Uh, so far, from some indications, there are some people who are also moving to his uh, camp. So if many of those people have some expertise, knowledge in some other fields that maybe the MPP will be counting on uh, going into 2024, it means that they will be losing uh, uh, such uh, people. So certainly. That is going to have some kind of um, uh, influ influ um, influence on on it, but the the bigger part is where people will be. People are asking whether it is going to have 
uh, um, some electoral implications, right? Because that is a, that is the question. Because political parties exist first and foremost to win political power. So the question is whether uh, his resignation is going to affect the MPP negatively. Um, certainly, uh, there will be some uh, effect, some impact will be, but as to whether that will be uh, um, that uh, whether it will be marginal or whether that impact is going to be extensive to the uh, extent that it will have uh, uh, maybe it will affect MPP's electoral fortune is, is another issue. But let us look at it from this perspective. One, um, from the first contest, the first special, uh, is this spe uh, special okay. delegation? Yes, conference, for example, I mean, he garnered, I think, less than 100 votes, right? And even in Ashanti region, uh, he was beaten by uh, the vice president. And again, if you look at it, the expectation, people expected that he will, he will be uh, uh, maybe second at least. But unfortunately, uh, he was beaten by Kennedy at Japan. But for me, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I was not surprised at all. And I think that maybe he said was not surprised because maybe after the election we went around, if you can realize that Kennedy Japan is someone who is maybe uh, a grassroots uh, person and all that. So that has contributed to that. Uh, to that. Now, the point is, but we, if we want to stand on that alone to, 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 to make some judgment, to pass some uh, judgments on it, maybe we may not get the, the whole picture because uh, if you look at the, uh, the, the the delegates, the the second one that will be that will be happening on November four, for example, they will have about two hundred thousand people going to vote, right? If you look at the the, the special delegate conference, there were just about a uh, thousand uh, voters. So it means that if Alan Chilamantin had waited and contested, where you have that two that you have, uh, I mean the large people. Uh, uh, voters going to vote, it would have seen his actual structure within the uh, uh, and then two other people, I think that two other would have given us a good picture. But one thing we should look at is that where is Alan Chermantin coming from? That's the first question. The second question is that is Chermantin like any other independent candidates that we have seen in the past, right? In my view, the dynamics are somehow different. One, we should look at where he is coming from, from Ashanti region. I see him like maybe he's considered as maybe the eye in recent times, like the eye of, I mean, uh, uh, some, I mean, the eye of the, of the MPPs in, in Ashanti region, because if you look at all the other politicians from Ashanti region, whether it's Matthew Opoku Prempe, uh, uh, um, the, the, the majority leader and, yeah. and others. Yes, they are all very big people within the party. But if you look at Alan Chiramante, this is someone who contested the, the the previous presidential election in 2007. He came second. I think he garnered about 726 votes, right? Uh, uh, and the city president had... We cannot just completely count his, his, his effect. And when he led the first time, he said he was resigning, or whether he resigned, and then he later came back. He's, I mean, he joined when they won. He served as 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 a minister minister for I mean for the I mean from 2016 also till uh, uh, till, till date. So you can see that in Ashanti region where he's coming from, that is where the problem is going to be, right? If Chairman should certainly he's not. He is not going to win the election for that one. We must get that clear. But the effect is that even though he's not going to win, it could have implications for the, I mean, for the electoral fortunes of the MPP because he's coming from a chance region. If people are going to vote because because of Alan Chiramanti, certainly he has some support base, and those people are going. Those people who should have voted for the MPP will be voting for Alan Chiramanti. So certainly he's going to pick some votes from a chance region. And he's going to do that, not from the NDC vote, in my candid opinion. Those votes will certainly be coming from uh, uh, from the MPP, and therefore, in my view, uh, that will have an, an, an impact. And we should also look at it from the fact that this particular government, government is struggling, 
right, in terms of trying to get things uh, uh, through, right, um, in terms of our economic situations and, and all that, the hardships and all that. So the expectation is that they would have had a very smooth uh, contest, right, and organize themselves as one, and then so that they'll be able to prosecute the, I mean, the, the, this election. Because NDC, from the look of things, looking at how they have conducted themselves, seems that they are organized, waiting for a, a contest. And we're expecting that the MPP being in government should do should should also have the same. But unfortunately, they've not been able to manage their own internal affairs. So in my view, certainly, Chairman won. He's not going to win. I mean, the, the, the election nationally, right? But certainly, he will be taking some vote. And in my view, those votes largely will come from the MPP. Uh, uh, so then, therefore, it is going to have some effect on 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 the MPP. Now, Dr. Tiku, if I may direct your attention to the MPP's leadership, we are curious about your practical response to Alan's candidacy. I mean, although there has been a press release, how do you think the MPP's leadership will practically respond to Alan's candidacy? The strategies, I mean, what strategies might they employ to mitigate the potential fallout from his departure? Well, I think um, his resignation, in fact, it, I mean, before he resigned, People were, I mean, there were speculations that he resigns and, and, and that kind of thing. So, um, well, I think that uh, if they had, they had, I think if they had put their feet down and organized themselves well, I mean, I think that it would have been better for them to have Alan Chalamantin as part of their team rather than uh, the resignation. Now, the point is that he's gone, he's resigned, right? The issue is that, well, they came out with some uh, um, uh, responses. I mean, trying to explain this, and he has also, I think, responded to some of the, 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 the issues. I think that once he is gone, the other aspect has to do with whether people are, some people are going to go along with him. Okay, and that is what they say. And that one, the MPP, uh, 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 what, can, what can they do in, in this context? If in order to mitigate that, particularly the Alan Chalamantin factor, like I indicated in the first, uh, uh, in my, my initial uh, uh, comment, coming from Ashanti region, right, which is the stronghold of the MPP, because if NDC should get about 30% in, in Ashanti region, for example, and they are able to, there's voter, voter uh, turnout, high voter turnout in NDC stronghold, and they are able to pick some uh, um, um, swing seats, I mean, swing regions, then it will be very difficult for the for the MPP. So to mitigate that, in my view, I think that at this particular point, if MPP is able to pick, a, I mean, if whoever will win the the presidential slot, okay, right now, if it is ba 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 Baumia, for example, certainly then we know that looking at, I mean, from the practice or the trend, it means that he'll be picking a, a running mate from the uh, from the Akan uh, 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 any of the Akan regions. In my view, in that situation, I think that the person must come from the Ashanti region to be able to neutralize Alan uh, uh, um, uh, uh influence, right? So if they are able to get a very, a, a candidate that will be acceptable, acceptable uh, uh, to not only the Ashanti region, but across uh, uh, the, the country, but that person must be an influential person in, in Ashanti region. I think that that's will also be this. But the point is as to whether if Kereda Japan should win the, 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 the contest, maybe the expectation is that he is going to pick, I mean, he will be expected to pick someone from uh, from the from, from the northern region, even though, I mean, it's not cut in uh, a stone where maybe he will be expected to do that. But certainly that will be the expectation. But it will be, it will be very, very important that MPP must have, because looking at, because Ashanti region is key to the MPP. So that is one fact that we they, they just have to understand. Ashanti region is the 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 heartbeat of the ND, I mean the MPP's uh, vote, and therefore they must strategize. And one of the key things I think, in my view, they can do is to pick uh, a running mate from Ashanti region, not just any running mate, someone who will be accepted across uh, uh, across I mean the other regions and an influential person person from the Ashanti region to be able to neutralize Alan uh, um, uh, 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 influence. So I think that that is one thing that they have to do. And certainly, 
apart from just looking at the Atlantis um, situation, it's been that because already the point is that the, the, we are facing hardships and all that, and that is going to be the, the, the key factor. And whatever they are going to, there are so many uh, electoral promises that have they promised that they have not been able to uh, deliver. So people will be expecting to see something new from the, the from the MPP. But from this Alan uh, uh influence, I think that if they are able to do that, that will also that will also, also help. And I think that they just have to to. I mean, they, they, it shouldn't be uh, antagonistic. The MPP should be very careful. They shouldn't take certain measures that to antagonize. Uh, other people from that region, because for Alan to, to 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 resign, certainly, I mean, there may be people, maybe there may be some powerful people from the region who are supporting him, and some people even across the other uh, 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 other regions will be supporting. And therefore, they just have to be very tactful, and then continue to engage others. They are, I mean, they, they are regional districts uh, offices and and all that, so that they will be able to. Uh, 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 to hold themselves uh, 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 together, because there's nothing they can they can do to bring Alan Martin back at the moment. Looking at the situation, it will be very difficult, and therefore they just have to organize themselves well. Thank you very much, Doctor Fiku. Sir, do you have anything to add to this? I think Doc has said it all. But one point that I want to emphasize is that they should try to prevent demonizing Alan. If they take some drastic measures against his departure, there are people who support him who may just keep quiet and on the day give their support to Allah. So it's important, while they are trying to show to the uh, party people that they did all they could and Allah still wanted to go, they should be careful and not take some drastic measures like uh, the Shanti Regional Chama has been doing and so on. There should be a balancing act. If they don't take care, then the focus will be between Allah and MPP and not the bigger fight with the NDC. And it will create a situation like in Santana where UNC and PFP were doing that at this order and they gave the PMP a leeway. So they are working, uh, MPP at the moment is working a tight rope. But if you Observe since Alan's announcement of departure, maybe the focus has shifted from the campaign towards November 4th. Everything is now about Alan Martin and so on. Then it's also important that going into the uh, actual delegates congress, some of the challenges that appeared in the uh, super delegates are dealt with so that the outcome will be seen to be free and fair. Everybody was given the level playing field so that it will be easier to bring even the other contestants together after this uh, contest. But let me also add quickly that Alan's going away, has taken away what the MPP needed most, a large dose of party unity, which is now somehow shattered and even the fear there could be other departures. Thank you. Continuing on the topic of Alan running independently. So with Alan running as an independent candidate, how might this impact the distribution of votes within the MPP strongholds? Okay. It appears Doc elaborated on the Ashanti region. The fact is that in all elections that MPP lost, I think four of them, it failed to get 74% in Ashanti region. So you need
Continue on the topic of Alan running independently. So with Alan running as an independent candidate, how might this impact the distribution of votes within the MPP's traditional strongholds? Yeah, it's a, let's focus on Ashanti region, for which, on which Doc has already elaborated. But I was making the point that if MPP gets less than 74% in Ashanti, it normally loses. It was only in 2020 that MPP got 71 and still won. And it was because of what happened in a place like Central Region. And in 2008, part of the reason why the fruit went down was that rivalry between Allah and Nana uh, Kufuado. Uh, Sometimes it induces uh, uh, apathy on the part of MPP voters in Ashanti. And so now that he's there, he's going to take some uh, votes to his side. There may be others who will not want to vote for him and will not want to vote for NDC, but he will decide to stay home. All this is going to reduce the MPP's vote in Ashanti to about 60%, and there is trouble. Alan got about 10 votes in Ashanti in, in the super delegates. That is how small his support in the Ashanti region is. And the other side of it is that if these things happen, it accentuates NDC's votes in the Ashanti region. And NDC has always been fighting for about 30%. If they should get about 30%, it will be good for them. On the other hand, let me also take Central Region. Central Region also has some connection with Alan. In 2020, it was a presidential vote in Central Region, which saw a coup for the truth. What is going to happen with uh, Kennedy from Central Region and Alan's also some strong group there? So what happens, what comes out of the uh, Primaries and who wins who affect what happens in central. Already, central region is for, for the meantime the only region which had grabbed data got changed in the last election. So, these are some of the uh, dynamics which will affect the MPP in the coming election. Thank you very much, sir. Dr. Teku, could Alan Tremontin's decision to run independently trigger a broader shift in Ghanaian politics toward more independent candidates in the future, in future elections? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think that it's not going to change uh, uh, anything much. I mean, we've been having independent candidates and Alan Tremontin's contest, uh, maybe, I mean, looking at the situation, in my view, I do not see him doing very well, right? But he might, I mean, perform better than the other independent candidates that we have seen in the past. The pos that possibility is there, right? But to win nationally, like I indicated, I do not see, see him. And I do not see, because of what has happened, we are going to have similar, uh, 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 because when he, he contests, right, what is the issue? The point is that, is it better for you to remain within your party and contribute, right? and continue to be respected as an elder person within the party, or it's better for you to move out, to go and contest, you lose, and then that ends, I mean, uh, uh, everything. So I think that people, it depends, people will look at so many things, but when people are genuinely, when people feel that they have been genuinely not treated well, all right, in that sense, certainly people, irrespective of the fact that people are not going to get considered by Alan Chilamantil, but the fact is that, it's about time that political parties must learn how to engage each other. That respect within the parties is very important. Because when people feel that genuinely they have, they have not been treated well, and therefore it could even be a protest election. They are contesting not because they know they are going to win, but they will be contesting to get you to lose. Because looking at, I mean, the situation, if you look at the MPP's current situation, right, it's very dire. Even though, if you look at Alan Chiramantin in 2007, when he contested 
And then there was all, I mean, there were these issues about I mean, internal party matters and all that. At the time, even though the economy was not that well, but it's far better than the current situation. And yet the MPP still lost the 2008 election, right? That was during Kufo, Kufo's time, when Kufo was completing his, his, his eighth year, right? If there were internal wranglings and all that. Even though we were not, the economic situation was not um, uh, uh, was not good, but it was far better than the current situation. Even at that time, they still lost the election, right? And look at the situation now. Now it's worse, and you have a key person like this uh, uh, resigning. And certainly, there are some other people, some other I mean, stalwarts within the party who will be will be supporting him here and and, and there. And therefore, um, it is it's, it's very important, right? But I do not see that. I mean, from what has happened, that is what's going to trigger uh, uh, independent candidate uh, uh, elections and, and what have you. But certainly, if people feel that they are not treated well in parties, they should. They should. I think that is even good, right? So the parties to will learn a lot of lessons from from this. I mean, the rules are there. Elections are like a football. Decision. There are rules and regulations. They must just play by the rules to make things. I mean, uh, uh, easy. For them, but if you decide that you want to bend uh, the rules or you want to moderate, I don't. I mean, I mean, he, he said that his uh, his party supporters have been uh, uh, subjected to some maltreatment and other uh, decisions. I think that it's. I mean, there are rules and regulations. Parties should just learn to play the electoral game by the electoral rules, right? So that when people lose and they know that they have lost, not just because they have been cheated or they have been uh, uh, um, muzzled out. But they lost on 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 based on I mean the established uh, uh, rules and regulations. I think that they will, they will, they will feel that they will be part of this the system. But where you try to because you just want someone to win, and therefore yeah. you use any other means to get the person out, then this will be the result. You will get the person out, but in the end, if you are not careful, you lose the election. So which is better? It is better for parties to play the electoral rules by the I mean uh, the electoral game by the electoral uh, rules. But I do not think that this singular act is going to uh, cause a lot of uh, independent uh, uh, candidates in, in, in future elections. But the fact is that if people feel that they are cheated or whatever, I will even encourage them to, to even go uh, independent to cause those parties so that people, I mean, political parties will end right from some of this uh, behavior. Thank you very much, Dr. Mm -hmm. Tiko. Sir, could you enlighten us on the success rates of independent candidates? Historically, what has been the success rates of independent candidates in Ghana's elections? And how does Alan Tremontin's campaign compare to those race, those cases? Okay, the first time we had independent uh, candidates was in 79. There were four of them. The aggregate percentage was 1.4. And that was only half of the this performing party candidate who got 2.8. That was in 79. The sixth can, uh, candidate was John Wilson and the third force, he got 2.8. The four independent candidates got uh, 1.4. Then in the fourth republic, the first time was in 2008, where Amafu got 2%. Then I was in 2012 and 2016 had 0.1 each. Interestingly, in 2020, uh, Osaya Bua, popularly called Joy, became the running mate of another independent candidate, and they did not perform any better. So that has been the record of the independent candidates. But it is also worthy to note that those previous independent uh, candidates do not have the crowds that Alan has. And so that may be uh, the difference. He is a leading member of an incumbent party, some considerable support this. I also agree with Doug, he's not likely to win the election. That's why it's clear. But he maybe he may have his own uh, estimations of what would be a credible performance. And maybe I have the feeling if he is estimates he performs creditably, he may use that as a basis to maybe form a car party of his own. 
Thank you very much, sir. Dr. Teku, can you discuss the role of third party movements in Ghanaian politics and how might Alan Tremantin's movement for change fits into this landscape? Well, okay. the, third, the third parties, um, third party uh, 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 movement, or let's just put it the third parties. And when we are discussing this, we will include the independent and then other smaller parties as part. Looking at the situation in Ghana, I mean, the Kenya Fourth Republic, where we are now. I mean, it would be very difficult for any third force or any third uh, party to make significant impact or most or to even win the elections, right? And is this, I mean, this feature is very common in uh, when in, in two party systems, when uh, uh, maybe two parties are being, I mean, uh, institutionalized, right? Or when they are established, when there's two party or when we have what we call the dual pulley, for example, one of the key uh, features is that that it leads to the disintegration of the smaller parties, and that's exactly what we are seeing in uh, in Ghana. So if you look at it from 1992, I think that I mean the, the I think they have about 11 seats also, uh, um, 11 seats. I think NDC had one um, <clears throat> uh, one 89, and I think 11 went to the other 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 smaller yeah. parties. Mm -hmm. Yes, All right then. It, it moved on to about nine to six, four. And then at a certain point, I think 2012, there was only one seat. And then 2020, 2016 election, the NDC and MPP shared all the votes. And then in uh, uh, 20, 2016 and 2020 elections as well. And if you look at the president, and that's the parliamentary seat, if you look at presidential, the same thing. But except uh, for 1992 and 2000, where they had about 89.7 uh, and then 92% 92, 92 or so. All the other elections, the NDC and MPP have been able to garner about 97 or 98% of the valid vote cast, right? So, and this is very common. This is very common in when you are establishing a duopoly or when a duopoly is established. The critical a key feature is that it leads to the disintegration of the smaller uh, party. So I do not, looking at the current situation, smaller parties, I do not see, uh, in terms of winning elections, elections, or so people are asking whether Alan's resignation or forming, I mean, uh, uh, coming together with other people to form, I do not think that they will be able to make any significant impact, most to talk about winning uh, 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 any elections uh, now, unless something extraordinary it could happen, maybe it could be conflict or something, and we are reorganizing ourselves. Other than that, they're looking at the current situation. I do not think that, I think the NDC and MPP have established themselves. They are well resourced. They have been in government, right? And we know in Africa, where do they get their resources? I've asked these questions already. The resources most of the NDC and MPP are, are, are expending on doing so many things are still coming from state uh, resources. These smaller parties have not had the opportunity of being in, in, in government. So NDC and MPP are very resourceful. So the contest is still between the NDC and then the MPP. I do not see any of the, because even the smaller parties themselves, they themselves are the, I mean, the, the third force, the so-called the third force or whatever, are not well organized, right? They, are, they face a number of issues. There are some internal, some of them are also external. Some of them are also part of the NDC and MPP uh, uh, politics. Some of them are also not organized properly because they are organized around certain personalities. So there's kind of personalization of political party activities, entrepreneurial uh, politicians and all that. Okay, so instead of organizing well-functioning parties, because some of the political parties right now, if we are political scientists here, how many of us can even recall the names of some of these smaller parties? They said that I mean, they are known by the names of their, their owners, right? So. You can have a, 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 people know that Kiyadonko has a party. But if you ask Ghanaians what is Kiyadonko's party, people will not know, right? And I mean, uh, uh, is it a software and cancer or different cancer and, and others, these smaller parties, right? They exist. They are they are organized around individuals, right? Instead of maybe allowing them to be a bit to be organized in such like any other organization, like other other parties. But if you look at so you can easily identify the owners of those political parties and they find them. If you add the LPG, I mean, this, and he will tell you that he pays for everything. They do not get support uh, uh, from, in terms of like other, others are, are, are having. But if you look at the NDC and MPP, they are well organized, they are well resourceful, and therefore it will be very difficult 
for any, I mean, any, any force, any movement to, to, to take that position as a third force to be, to the extent that they will be able to make, I mean, a colossal impact on, on, on the electoral outcome. For example, in recent, I mean, I do not see that happening now. That's why I said, unless there is a major shift, something happen, it could be as a result of conflict, war, or anything. And if we start to organize ourselves, that is about looking at the current situation where we are now, I do not see any significant impact from any third force. Thank you very much, Dr. Teku. Sir, you may add to this. Yes, like he indicated, uh, in 2000 and 2008, the third parties managed to push the presidential election into the runoff, and which I described them as king makers. They are no longer so. In the last two elections, we didn't have runoff. And they are, the number of their parliamentary seats have dwindled, and in the last two elections, they were men at all. One other aspect about them, which does not augur well for the future, is that they keep dividing themselves up. Somebody is a presidential candidate of this party, and that next election, he forms his own party, and, and so on. Similarly, once in a while, one group will merge. In 2012, PPP came in. We thought it was going to do something. It only came dead, did better than the others. By subsequent elections, you know where to be found. In this last election, it was Doom. I don't know how Doom is going to perform at the next election. But let me also emphasize that that space for a third force is there. And maybe that is what Alain is hoping he can occupy. But whether or not he will succeed is another question. Thank you very much. Also, sir, beyond the immediate impact on the MPP, what broader implications might Alan Tremontin's resignation and independence candidacy have on Ghana's political landscape in the long term? In the, in the very long term, it may depend on how he performs in 2024. If he performs considerably well, like I've said, maybe he'll be able to form his own party and bring other smaller groups on his side. But if he performs as poorly as the others, and given the entrenched position of uh, the two major parties, uh, it's going to be di difficult. It's really going to be difficult. But one point we shouldn't forget is that after four terms of MPP, four terms of NDC, or maybe the other way around. Kenyans are getting worried about this geopoly, this uh, intransigence of the two parties and so on. And they are always wishing something could happen so that there could be a change. But the situation as it is now, they have to choose between the rock and the hard place. And that situation is likely to continue even the situation as we have at the moment. Thank you very much. Dr. Ate, could you have any words to add to this? Well, um, what I can say is that um, if you look at in terms of the broader, like I indicated in my view, I'm very clear in my mind that I do not see him uh, doing very well to the extent that maybe he'll have that cloud to be able to bring others uh, together. At best, he will pick some votes, uh, uh, maybe from within the M MPP. And if in the event that MPP loses election, certainly we'll be talking about Alan's resignation from the MPP and its implications. Are, are you getting it? So it is something that parties will have to will, will learn. So for me, I see his resignation. I look at it from the effect that he's going to have on the MPP. If MPP wins the election despite this, then certainly it means that, I mean, that, that would be the end. But in the event that MPP loses the election, when we are looking at the factors responsible for MPP's uh, uh, defeat, certainly Alan's factor will play a critical role because we'll be also looking at the votes in MPP's stronghold, whether MPP was able to, uh, uh, whether maybe that it, it affected MPP's, um, or maybe MPP, 
was not able to do well in his own uh, in his uh, backyard in his stronghold. So certainly we'll be looking at Alan's uh, uh, factor, Alan's uh, contribution uh, uh, to that, and therefore that will serve it, it to be uh, a lesson that will be learned by both the NDC and MPP moving uh, uh, forward. So basically, I do not see him doing very well, right? Okay, but like I said, certainly he will pick some votes and those votes, in my view, will be coming from the MPP. So if MPP should lose election, certainly we're talking about Alan Swakta. Are you getting it? And that will also uh, uh, influence the decisions, some of the I mean, actions that are taken by the MPP and NDC uh, uh, and, and uh, how they confront issues in the future elections. Thank you very much, Doc. So I in the quickly, okay. let me tell me quickly how a friend analyzes the situation. In a very funny way, he said, MPP was definitely going to lose the next election. Why should Allah allow himself to be the cause of MPP's defeat? And in fact, MPP was already going to lose the election. That is a, a very funny way. Uh, Ordinary member, an ordinary citizen put the situation, but I think it's it's made a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> and so in the event that Alan Chermanton's movement for change gains momentum, how might this reshape the traditional two-party competition between the MPP and the NDC? Yeah, we are making the condition if it gains momentum. But like we have already said, there will be lessons learned. Parties will have to learn to solve their internal problems so that these divisions will not come up again. So that those will be an important lesson that will be learned from that. But whether or not it is going to make that massive impact is still a question to be debated. All right. Thank you very much. Dr. Teku. Please add your thoughts. Right. So what I would say is that uh, party organization is an important predictor of uh, party performance. Mm -hmm. Right. So in my view, I think that the uh, MPP could have, um, I think they didn't put certain things in place, certain measures in, in place to be able to address this issue. Because one, this is someone after 2007 elections, he decided to resign from the party. Now he came back. We work with him and all that. So going into another contest, I think that they should have known that the, the possibility of him uh, uh, living again in the event that something happened. So what did they put in place to en ensure that? What did he complain about in the previous elections, which was why he decided to leave, and then he came back. So what did they what what did they do, right? So if you look at and uh, 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 another. Issue is also now waiting. Credit and Japan. We do not know how it's going to end up. I mean, how it's going to, to, to end up. Whether, I mean, is it going to be another second resignation or whatever is that? So, what have they put in place? Right. So sometimes it's very important that you put certain structures in, in place, reconciliation and all that. I mean, effective reconciliation uh, 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 mechanisms to be able to address some of these issues. But if you just get them to come and sign that, oh, do A, B, and C. That, that is not all. I mean, after that, he has resigned. How are you going to, how, how will he ban by those things that maybe he has signed? He said he has resigned. So he's no longer with you. What are you going to do? So I think that and the, 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 the broader decision is that they need to, I mean, parties need to learn, put certain measures in place to see how they, be, they should know their own history, know their own issues, know that, Maybe this is likely to happen, and if this does not happen, what are we going to do? Were there no signals within the party that is it that they were not able to engage uh, Alan and then and, 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 and his group? So what are they doing currently? I mean, Alan is gone. So the immediate lesson we have to learn is that they have November for election to run. Kenya Japan, the show the showdown man is now waiting. He wants fair. A, a, a fair opportunity to contest. He doesn't want any of his uh, his his, his uh, assistant or his party agents to be maltreated yes. and all that. So what has been put in place? So they need to be very careful about how they go about this so that 
they do not, if they are not careful, and then he should also go the Alan way, then it will become a, 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 another for the, for the for the MPP. So basically, I think that, I mean, I mean, there are so many useful lessons to learn. The immediate one, what are they, they need to put certain measures in place to ensure that they will still have uh, uh, Kenina Japan. I mean, so that the context should be very fair. People should lose because they know that they have lost. People didn't vote for them. But where there is there, there's some kind of um, uh, darkness or something around, okay, people will not, people will be, I mean, that is where people will, will, will not have faith in the electoral process and they want to move away. They should allow people to contest and, I mean, campaign and, and it's the same party. Whoever will win should be supported. That is the whole thing. But if there's that deliberate uh, uh, decision, deli deliberate uh, uh, decision that someone must win at all costs, then others will lose. But the implication of them losing will be there. So that, that is it. So I think that uh, uh, so many le lessons to be, to, be, to be learned. Not only the MPP, now it is today it is MPP. NDC will also may also face similar uh, things in the future. And therefore they should also, they should not just be happy about whatever is happening. But the thing is that we, we have decided that this is the democracy that we want. It has come to stay. And therefore at every point in time, we learn some of the problems I mean, uh, some of the challenges, we learn from some of the challenges and then see how best we can address them to make our electoral uh, system uh, better. Thank you very much, Dr. Teko. Now, sir, considering the increase in interest in independent candidates and third forces in Ghana, what potential changes do you foresee in the strategies and platforms of major political parties in response to evolving voter preference? It's interesting you say that there are interests in uh, those third parties and independent candidates. But how well are they going to perform? It's another issue. But still for the parties, like what Allah has done, and like Doc said, some person, some, one, one, the other party could one day also do a similar thing. So it will be good for the parties to listen to the concerns of members when these things come. And when they are conducting internal uh, elections, they should be fair in their dealings. They should give level playing grants to all so that those who lose do not feel too bad to run away. Right. Thank you very much. Dr. Teku, you may step in. All right, I think that we have uh, said a lot on this on this matter. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the other, the two major parties, the NDC and MPP, right, certainly looking at the situation, I mean, they are still in, 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 in the context. I do not see any of the smaller parties making any impact. But the point is that they just have to learn or they just have to unlearn the bad things, okay? <laughs> they just have to unlearn the bad things so that they'll be able to improve their fortunes. For now, NDC is 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 is, is okay. They are happy that the, 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 these issues are happening within the, the um, a, a, MPP, indicating that they are not united and, and all that. But the, the, the point is that it's, it's just, be, be, I mean, apart from this, there are so many other things that we will have, they have to uh, look at. But they just have to learn from this so that going into the, the election itself, because whatever is happening, even within the parties, sometimes they even take it into the elections. When you see internal party, I mean, uh, uh, internal fight, party fights, uh, uh, conflict and all that, it's the same thing we see at the national level as well. So whatever is happening within the, within the parties, they just have to learn to address them, right? Because certainly it will have some implications uh, the national uh, uh, elections. And for the MPP, looking at the situation, the economic situation and all that, to the extent that even about maybe uh, half of the members of parliament uh, call for the uh, um, the resignation of the finance, their own finance minister and all those kinds. So it means that a lot has happened, right? So the party has not been in, in good shape if you want to look at it from the previous, I mean, how it was, I mean, in previous uh, elections, and therefore, this is about this is a time for them to be united. This is a time for them to to tone down on some of the utterances that some of their leaders, 
some of their uh, 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 their leaders. In fact, sometimes, I mean, it, 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 you make certain statement, pronouncement, and then people who, like say indicated, people can work against you silently. They may not come out openly, all right? When they come out, that is where you think that you are going to uh, punish them or whatever. But they will just look on, look at you. But at, during the election, they will go and then vote for, I mean, they will not vote for the NDC, they go to vote for Alex Ramantin. They think that maybe he's, because some people still see him as a party person. They have worked with him for a very long time. So a lot, and people will have to learn a lot. And they have to also unlearn some of the bad habits that result in some of these things. So they'll be able to improve, uh, uh, make progress. Uh, uh, so that we see whether maybe in 2024 20, uh, uh, elections, they will be able to go through, which is very difficult anyway. Thank you very much, Dr. Teku. Now, finally, to you, sir, do you foresee any active involvement of the wife of Alan and Kennedy in this election cycle, given Lordina Mahama and Rebecca Akufuado's, as well as Samira Baumia's longstanding visibility on the campaign trail? Already, right, Alan's uh, wife has started. He did some dancing at the resignation and departure. And I think that was the very first time I even heard of her. So already I started. And whoever becomes the MPP's presidential candidate, definitely, if it is uh, the vice president, then we already know how Samia had been doing over the years. And the Japan's wife, or I don't know, wife or wives, I don't know how they are going to contribute to the his own political party, if he should win. But these are all interesting things likely to happen. And I'm happy you're asking this question because uh, Rashida is also listening in and is always interested in uh, uh, first ladies and their role in politics in Africa. Thank you. So Mark. I think it's a good point for her. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you to you, Mr. Frimpong, and Dr. Atiku for this very insightful discussion. And we've come to the end of today's discussion. Thank you. Thank you, too.